In a plaza on Florin Road in South Sacramento, the black entrepreneurial spirit is alive. A timeline of black history is painted on the walls and businesses successfully map out their own future. This is the Florin Square Shopping Center. Thomas Donaldson purchased this building in 2003. He came to California from Pennsylvania with a dream. Dear Lord, I want to come to California and I want to be a machinist. My first profession was simply as a manufacturing engineer. I love to build things. And then uh, just so happens I got, I got into real estate. Years later, Donaldson moved to Sacramento to serve a cause greater than himself. Now he mentors other black entrepreneurs at Florence Square. Going into business is one thing. Being successful and prosperous at that venture is totally different. Especially for black entrepreneurs, they disproportionately lack funding, access to social networks, and face other systemic barriers to success. That many, many people have the desires, the aspirations to go in business for themselves, but they lack a physical place to set up. So my thought was very simple. If I provide a clean, safe environment for people to, to, to fulfill their dreams, uh, it's a win-win situation. But Donaldson needed help. I realized what this building needs uh, is a full-time marketing person. And uh, when Aaron walked in, I knew there was an answer to my prayers, period. Aaron Boyce, who's from Brooklyn, New York, moved to California for a better life just like Donaldson. For Boyce, the journey to success ain't been no crystal stair. He describes his past as... Single mom, child of welfare, uh, and, and I've been stuttering since I was nine. So, I mean, I had issues as a kid, um, but I was able to rise above those issues. Mom always told me that, um, you know, whatever you want to do, do it, you know? And so um, I did. With Donaldson's mentorship and Boyce's connections, the shopping plaza grew to more than 200 businesses, retail stores, and nonprofits, 90% black owned. Donaldson says the center operates like a mall, encouraging shoppers to buy black. If the dollar does not stay in the community, the community dies. Now, Florence Square is Sacramento's Black Wall Street, a living descendant of one of the most prosperous black communities in the U.S., the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We didn't call ourselves Sacramento's Black Wall Street. Other people did. That is a huge sense of pride. Black Wall Streets emerged in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in the U.S. Our history is something that we have to understand. Hannibal Johnson is an educator who's written extensively about the creation of the Greenwood District in 1906 and its influence on the Black entrepreneurial spirit. This was a concentration of small businesses, of entrepreneurs, of mom and pop type operations. Like other communities across the country, Greenwood was born in the shadow of slavery and fueled by legalized racial segregation and overt racism. The communities, the black community and the white community, were literally separated by the Frisco tracks, the railroad tracks. And so black folks lived north of, of the tracks, created their own community, which included um, an economy on Black Wall Street or in the Greenwood District. White folks were jealous of the, the relative success of, of black folks across the tracks. And you can see black millionaires, black people wear, wearing nice clothes, black people living in fancy homes, black people driving cars. They only needed a, a reason and they found the, their excuse to burn it all down. The Greenwood District changed forever in 1921. On May 30th, a black teenager named Dick Rowland got on an elevator. A white teenager named Sarah Page was the elevator operator. Historians say Rowland may have accidentally stepped on Page's foot, or he probably tripped and bumped into her. Page screamed. The next morning, police arrested Rowland. The Tulsa Tribune published an inflammatory report inciting violence. The story was entitled, Nab Negro for Attacking Girl in an Elevator. It was essentially a call to action and a call to arms to the, to the white community. 
A group of black men went to the courthouse to protect Roland from a large white mob and possible lynching. A white man tried to take a gun that one of the black men was holding. The gun discharged. And in the words of one of the survivors of the massacre, all hell broke loose after that. Thousands of armed white rioters invaded Greenwood. They murdered black people, looted businesses, and left 35 city blocks in charred ruins. The Tulsa Race Massacre began May 31st and ended June 1st. Historians believe as many as 300 people may have died, most of them black people, making it the deadliest race-based massacre in the nation's history. Not one of the white perpetrators were ever arrested or convicted of a crime. When I think of Greenwood, what really hurts me more than anything is the fact that the people who built it, built it from a dream. Despite structural racism, white supremacy, and hate, the spirit of Greenwood's Black Wall Street remains unbreakable then and now. We're looking for vendors that want to make second Saturday their home. I think we are a microcosm of, of that Wall Street because there was a spirit there that grew. And that growing spirit continues to provide a sense of hope and great strength for today's black entrepreneurs, those still working to rise above challenges. We want this, this building to still be a beacon of success, collaboration, networking, and family for all to come. South Sacramento is not a place to be afraid of. It's a place where people who live here understand that we can thrive and we are thriving and we will build and make things better. Hi, welcome in, welcome in. Behind the glass doors of this store nestled in South Sacramento, Betty Davis greets familiar faces. Is this all, is this all your kids? This is all my kids. Oh, goodness. Well, nice. time to see. Oh, yeah, so and welcomes new ones. Wow, this looks really nice. Davis owns Culture Collection at Florence Square. The shopping center has more than 200 businesses, retailers, and nonprofits. Most of them are black owned. It's just an experience to walk through the stores and, and see people that, that look like you, that have businesses of all different kinds. Culture Collection is a gift shop. It offers hard to find items highlighting black people, art, and culture. I couldn't have done any of this without my husband. Davis says the business started with love. He's been my backbone and my everything. He's just been been there for me ever since we started this business. And Lee and Betty Davis got married in 1972. That same year, they traveled to Africa. While there, they collected African goods and products. We bought stuff home with us from our trip, and people kept saying, well, can you get me that, or can you get me this? The couple started buying rare black collectibles at trade shows to sell from their home. The products were so popular that in 1992, they moved into a bigger space in Florin Mall. We had fashion shows and poetry readings and Black History Month celebrations, Mother's Day celebrations. Their store quickly became a staple in the community, but they faced an unforeseen obstacle when the mall closed in 2006, leaving them without a space to sell their products. And we were the last people to leave <laughs> there. Some people kept saying, you can't close because you've been around Sacramento so long. Culture Collection bounced around, testing new spaces. The Davises chose Sacramento's Black Wall Street as a new home in 2021. Florence Square was established in 2003. It's a living descendant of one of the most prosperous Black Wall Streets, the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There, black entrepreneurs created their own economy during legalized racial segregation. There was pretty much every business you could think of that was doing well in, in that particular community in Tulsa. Davis is often regarded as a pioneer of that black entrepreneurial spirit in Sacramento. You know, in Sacramento, when I think about it, we probably were the first black, you know, gift store in Sacramento. There were some other bookstores and some other things, but we were the primary gift store. Together, the Davises used culture collection to push black education, representation, and entrepreneurship. We have, you know, quite a few books. We have color books that little children can buy <laughs> and that have, you know, little black things to color, little black faces to color. Those are things that I, as a child, missed because I didn't see that, you know, growing up. 
The Davises want other black people to be successful too, like them. We really want to encourage other people to open up businesses and be a, you know, be a black business owner. Well, I'm excited about Florence Square because this is um, kind of a conglomeration of a lot of different businesses and a lot of energy and we have, we're all kind of like one big family and everybody supports one another. Timothy Poole felt that energy when he walked through the doors of Florence Square. After walking that long hall and seeing where we came from and the people that did a lot for our ethnicity, I figured, hey, I need to be on this wall one day. Poole secured an office space at Florence Square. He launched a nonprofit, Hooked on Fishing, Not on Violence, to help youth in underserved communities. See, this is what you're going to get a lot of the time. It's a lot of seaweed. But persistence, persistence is key. It's got to keep going out. On Saturdays, Darius Jacobs wakes up early in the morning to go fishing. He says it provides peace and helps keep him out of trouble. I was basically taking the wrong path. And I had, um, like I said, I had these elder people come out and explain, like, that this is not the way to go. He's a junior instructor for the nonprofit, which runs fishing clinics on the weekends to get the youth outdoors. The program grew out of Poole's own passion for fishing, an outlet for him during difficult times. I'm a victim of a violent crime myself. I was shot five times by one gun. He says he promised he would change his life for the better and help others. So the mission for this uh, program is to save our young folks, give them an outlet um, that they never would have encountered until they come to this program. Poole founded the mentorship program in 2011. We've had 3,200 people that have been through this program from start to now. Um, we've had a lot of young kids go from learning how to fish to showing folks how to fish. It's an experience, he says, wouldn't have been as successful without Florence Square. Just like for Poole, the center continues to be a hub for black entrepreneurs to pursue their dreams. Florence Square helped me and my organization grow because it was so many people coming into the square that I was able to connect with. Florence Square is also providing hope for the future. It's never too late to start over and start a new business and, and be successful because the world's waiting for all of us, I think. And I think there's plenty of room for us to be um, successful business people. Hi, my name is Kelson Patterson. Hey, I'm Tajay. I'm Roman. And, and we, we do, do business, business at, at Florence, Florence Square. Square. My name is Faith, and we do business at Florence Square. My name is Passion Bailey, and I do business at Florence Square.